So we will start off with uh, Sebastian Loring. Yeah, very good afternoon, and uh, thanks to the organizers for inviting me. Um, the title, The Neglected Sun, my, our book title, a uh, book that I wrote together with Fritz Farnholt, uh, how the IPCC managed to forget uh, natural variability in their climate models. And uh, let's see if I can move. Yes. The sun, uh, we should not forget the scale of, of, of things here. And uh, one uh, important fact is that 99.98% of the total energy contribution to the Earth's climate actually comes from the sun. And, and I can say that as a geologist because the other 0.02% only come from the Earth's interior, from, from the uh, heat that the Earth generates, both uh, from the uh, original formation of the Earth, but also the radioactivity. So if we change this uh, enormous energy that comes from the sun slightly, it seems at first sight plausible that it has, could also have an effect on the climate system. Let's see if that's true. Um, the, the, this uh, fusion reactor on the sun does not uh, generate energy in a very uh, sort of standard way. It, it uh, changes in activity, and one of the most well-known cycles is the 11-year solar cycle, also called Schwabe cycle. And, and here you see the, the sunspots, how they, and, and the activity actually here that changes over the course of an 11-year cycle. Um, but there are other cycles, and they go all the way to 2,000, 2,300 years. Uh, in a previous talk, I was called, how can we reconstruct the uh, solar activity of the past? And uh, this is usually done with isotopes, beryllium-10 or C14, and, and they are related to the cosmic rays, which, in fact, again, are controlled by the uh, solar magnetic field. So there's a translation of these isotopes here to solar activity. And uh, there's a paper here, Steinhilber, we heard from Willi already. It's not his favorite paper, but it's one of those papers uh, that has attempted to reconstruct uh, solar activity for the last uh, 9,000 years. And um, it, it's from the PNAS, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States. So it's a good journal. And you see there's a lot of variability here. Now, what you can do is you can run frequency analysis over this. And there's other data sets here from Solanke, for example, in 2004. And uh, this has been here analyzed uh, in, a, in a paper uh, two years ago. And, and uh, the outcome is, is striking. There are frequencies or periods of cyclicity which are very characteristic. Uh, not even shown is the Schwabe cycle here on the left. So this is years here. The Gleisberg cycle, which is something like 90 years, is very prominent. The Seuss de Vries cycle, 210 years. There's an unnamed uh, cycle that has 500 years. Uh, let's call it the, the soon cycle. How about that? Huh? Oh, no. Maybe we'll wait, wait a few years and some few more papers. And there's another one which, meanwhile, has been named Eddy cycle, 1,000 years, and uh, a Hallstatt cycle. So these uh, cycles come very clearly out of the frequency analysis, and this is without doubt. Yeah? So this is consensus, if there can be any consensus in science. Even the IPCC says this is a simplification. Again, Schwabe, there's a Hale cycle with 22. And uh, so these are cycles that all contribute to the variability uh, of the uh, solar activity. The big question, oh, okay, here's another very fresh paper from this month, 2014, Earth Science Reviews. Have you read this uh, paper already, <laughs> Willie? Yes, I'm having a hard time publishing. Uh, uh, that's right. So it's, he's the first author here. It's Sun et al. 2014. And I found one statement in the abstract uh, is particularly interesting. He also found with his co-authors a 2300, that's the Hallstatt cycle, and the 1,000-year Eddy cycle. These are of great importance because um, we're going to see what they do to the Earth's climate. Uh, the IPCC is of the opinion that all of these variabilities on the sun play no role to climate. And uh, this is a forcing diagram of the latest uh, report. And uh, here you see the CO2, tremendous forcing here, 1.68. Here's the sun, which nearly has nothing, 0 
So all of the, uh, the drivers of the climate they think, the IPCC thinks, is, is here in the greenhouse gases, black carbon, soot, that plays a role. And then the aerosols, I think, are very poorly understood in general. So let's uh, explore if this is plausible. And uh, again, I'm a geologist. I don't necessarily look into the future. I look into the past. And uh, it's a the scientific method that the models need to first replicate or reproduce the past in order to be fit to be used for the future. Um, there is a big enigma here. Uh, and when we look back into the data sets, uh, the sun has played a tremendous role in climate, has always done so. And uh, I don't want to bore you with too many examples. So you can read this uh, fantastic NIPCC report. Uh, and I had the honor to uh, also contribute here uh, and uh, worked with, with Willy on the, on the solar chapter, a fantastic uh, work led by, uh, um, by, by my colleagues from the NIPCC. And also in our book, we have uh, 60 pages of references. So if you're interested in the subject, you will certainly find lots of peer-reviewed papers that uh, discuss this solar climate interaction. You could also go to Science Direct. This is one of the key sources for new papers uh, from Elsevier, a uh, search engine. Just enter uh, solar, uh, uh, solar forcing in there, and you uh, find uh, 22,683 hits. Yeah? You could now go and study probably for a couple of years, and there's always something which is just published. Uh, uh, none of this is being reported in the mainstream media. It's not interesting. Yeah? <laughs> But the, the papers do exist. The scientists, they, they write their papers, but they don't go public because then they fear probably their funding will be cut and they can no longer publish these kind of papers. Or you go to another website here. It's uh, called Club du Soleil. It's run by uh, Martin Blau from Queen's University of Belfast. There's always the latest few papers. It's a huge collection of papers that uh, addresses the climate-solar uh, interaction. So the, the internet has it all, it's just not being used, uh, is my feeling. Now, back to Steinhilber, so et al, 2012. These guys uh, have got uh, reconstructed the solar activity of the past 9,000 years. They also compared this with a, a, with a monsoon climate um, signal that they found in a cave in Asia that was published, and there's a pretty good match here. So s climate and the solar activity seem to be linked, even in this quite neutral paper, more IPCC, sorry, and more to the IPCC side uh, verging paper, this could not be ignored and, and has been written, of course, not necessarily in the abstract, but somewhere in the text, uh, not easy to find. Here's another paper, Junginger et al., 2014, for February. Uh, it, it talks about uh, really the uh, rain in, in Kenya, you know, in East Africa, and also this was uh, shaped by solar irradiation, a very good match. You will not read about that in the newspaper, of course. Another paper here from, um, that is March 2014, solar forcing of North Atlantic surface temperature and salinity over the last thousand years. A very good correlation found here. And here we have Ogotsov and Oinonen 2014, March this year. Uh, the Gleisberg cycle, that is this 90-year cycle, uh, was found in the nitrate concentration in polar ice. Interesting. How did the sun do all of this when it has really no climate power, according to the, N, uh, to the IPCC? Okay, we are mainly of course here to discuss how could this warming of the last 150 years have happened. Well, I'm, I'm of the opinion that yes, there has been a warming of nearly a degree uh, since uh, the late uh, 19th century. This is basically the recovery of the last, last ice, little ice age plus an additional warming. So yes, I, I do see this one degree of warming. But the question now is, uh, what has caused this? And uh, yes, this is the temperature again. And the CO2 has gone up, huh? so good correlation, but is that also causation? And now comes the sun, and this is the magnetic field of the sun. This has gone up in the same way. Yeah? So 
Now, who actually is a real driver of the temperature? Uh, if you ask me, it's mostly the sun. CO2 may also play a role. Um, we do think that uh, there is a, a contribution, but by far not as uh, strongly as the IPCC says. So there has been a doubling of this solar magnetic field um, over the last, uh, let, let's say, 200 years. Okay. There is an interesting uh, coincidence here. Is it co coincidence? Uh, I, I say no. Here's a correlation of the solar activity by Solanke and others, 2004, 10 years old paper in Nature. And they write that the sun in the last few decades was uh, as active as hardly before in the last 10,000 years. So is this a coincidence that we live in a warm time and that the sun has just been so super active? It's, it's being ignored also when, when we talk about it uh, by the media. So this is something which is really important. Um, another question, the warmth that we have, is that unprecedented? And, and here is a graph, I think it's done by Bob Carter, and it really looks at uh, temperature reconstruction in Greenland, and uh, you see here, we are here, we, we are here, and it, going, it was going up, and uh, when you look back, it's a little ice age, medieval warm time, cold phase of the migration period, Roman warm time, another warm time, another warm time. So there's a repetition. As a geologist, this is a cycle, you know? And we are just in another of these cycles. And uh, when you then look at the medieval warm time, this is from the latest IPC, uh, IPCC report, the medieval warm time is being accepted more or less now. It's no longer a hockey stick. It, it's in the latest report. The question is, when CO2 is so low, how could this uh, warms, how, how could this uh, hot period uh, been, been? I mean, that's, that's a big question. No climate model can reproduce this. So I would only believe those models that actually can uh, reproduce a medieval warm time. Now, if you look at the solar activity curve, this is here. We are here at uh, zero. Here, this is present day. And uh, in general, uh, the cold times were times of low, radio, uh, low solar activity and the warm times of high solar activity. It's not a one-to-one -one match. There's other factors. So there is uh, auto cycles, out, uh, cycles that are in the system itself, plus also uh, other parameters. But in general, the medieval warm time was a time of high solar activity, the same of the Roman time. So I think this really points to the sun of being a very important uh, mechanism here. If you include um, the sun, then also the climate sensitivity, the, the warming that CO2 um, drives, will reduce. And uh, the recent wave of papers on climate sensitivity really brings down this value from 3 degrees per CO2 doubling to 2. And there is not even the sun included here. This is the ocean cycle, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. It's a 60-year ocean cycle. It just pulses through the history. And people have now begun to realize that half of the warming we have seen, 1977 to 2000, has been due to the ocean cycle. Now the ocean cycle is going down, and this is why we don't have any more warming. Eh? And so this is the two degrees. If you now add, and people will eventually realize, if you add the sun, then this will go to one and a half or one degree centigrade. I'm not sure if we arrive at zero at some stage, but uh, uh, in our book, The Neglected Sun, we uh, have two models, and it's simple models. We work with 1.0 degrees and 1.5, and uh, just wait for two more years, and I'm sure we'll see more papers with 1.5 and eventually one degree uh, th this is uh, an overview. So we came from three to now two in the literature and one and a half and, and one maybe eventually. And uh, Lord Moncton will also speak about this, I think, uh, to, to, uh, later today maybe even. You know? So this is the, um, the, the temperature scenario by the IPCC, so up to four degrees. If you now use a better uh, lower climate sensitivity, this will not be four degrees we think it's more likely one degree maximum uh, in warming. And uh, yeah, it's, we have also talked to a modeler and said, hey, could you not just run one of your models with a reduced climate sensitivity? And uh, he said, no, I'm not going to do this. 
And uh, we still, I think, are on the lookout for modelers who are brave enough to now understand the science of, this, of the time and, and model with lower climate sensitivities. Uh, that, that would be a big achievement. But at the moment, they all refuse. I would like to close uh, with a quote here from George Box. Essentially, all models are wrong, but some are useful. You, you know this quote, but I think it's very applicable to the climate discussion. And with that, I would like to thank for your attention. <laughs>